Good day, and welcome to session four of Gentle Yoga with Laura Ashland. I am truly enjoying bringing you twice a week, Mondays and Wednesdays, my new sessions. I look forward to it, and hopefully we can practice together. Sitting in a nice, comfortable posture, lifting through spine, relax your shoulders, and of course, finding a cushion or some kind of a prop or a pillow or a blanket under the hips if needed, if not directly on the mat. Close your eyes. And today we're just going to rub the hands together a little bit for some heat building and just place your hands gently on the eye sockets, part of the cheek. And again, rubbing, building some heat, getting ready to practice, bringing your attention inward and in present moment, holding on to the eye sockets and the cheeks. elbows be free to move, drawing the belly back to the spine as you begin that nice ujjayi breath, wind in the tunnel, six to eight counts in, six to eight counts out, your pace for the next minute. Relax your cheeks, relax the jaw. And for a little bit of breathing uh, exercise today, we're going to take a nice inhale. And again, inhale extending through the diaphragm. Shoulders and back are neutral and quiet. Hold here for about four to six seconds. And then exhale, a good flushing exhale. That can be exhaling through the nose or exhaling through the mouth. We're going to do that two more times. Big inhale. Hold for four to six seconds. Relax around the holding. And flush it out when you're ready. Last time, big inhale. Exhale, flush it out. Now continuing with just your natural breathing. Again, it could be three to four counts in and out. Maybe it's six to eight. Some of you, 10 to 12. Make this your breathing pattern, but begin to slow down and bring yourself back to center through your breath. You can certainly close your eyes. There's really nothing to see. 
unless I change my posture and you're following along with me to look up and change, of course. But if not, when you're in your practice, hopefully my voice, my teachings guide you that you don't have to often open the eyes unless you wish to. Today we're going to begin our spine in a rotation. Now rather than rotation left and right in this direction, we're going to do a nice what's called Sufi circle. It's like the Sufi dancers in a circle, but what's dancing is your spine. So we're going to inhale, take a nice lift up. As you exhale, we're going to come forward just a little bit and then swinging off to the side. And taking these nice circles slowly, hips feel tight at first. You can certainly let the shoulders and arms go and be kind of soft here, which creates a heaviness and in the head. Or if you wish to stay more supported and be more upright, planting the fingertips, tops of the knees, nice circling here. So it's like you're stirring a bowl. Your spine is the spatula and obviously the pelvic bowl is the bowl. So low, if you wish. Or of course, staying a little higher, still sitting into the hip. And getting them warmed up. Let's take it in the opposite direction. Inhale, lift. Exhale, come forward, and this time off to the left. Again, any amount that feels comfortable for you. The more we move here, the warmer our body. We get to go a little bit deeper, but take your time. Again, relax in the arms and head. Supporting the hands and the shoulders, or just the bare movement in a circle. Doing both sides eight to ten times. Nice circling here. Coming back to center. We're going to go ahead and open a rotation to the left side. So my right hand forearm is pressing inside the thigh. Just a slight rotation. And this time my arms are going to come up, a little leaning back. Exhale as you come to the other side. I'm pressing, supporting here. There's the stability for the mobility of the twist. Once I've secured the twist, Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, bring your arms down and the other side. Inhale as you rotate open, arms up. Exhale, lower the arms. Rotate to the other side. Inhale, lift. Arms lift up. Exhale, arms come down. One more time on each side, rotating gently. Inhale, lift. Exhale, arms come down. Inhale as you go off to the other side. Arms lift. Exhale, arms lower. And back to center as we just do another little bit of Sufi circling a few times in one direction. and a few times in the opposite direction. Today we're gonna to work our shoulders for a little bit. Again, you wanna switch the legs, bring the other leg forward. Maybe you'd like to change position, have your legs straight here, that's perfectly fine. We're going to take the right hand 
left shoulder, so opposite shoulder, left hand, right shoulder, opposite shoulder, and I'm kind of stacking my elbows like logs. We're going to inhale and look up, open up the rib cage, let this come from beautiful extension in the ribs. Exhale as you cat like and round and lower down. And two more. Inhale as you lift and look up. Eyes are open or closed. Exhale as you come forward. Last one. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you come forward here, rounding, soft, relaxed. Inhale as you bring your elbows as high as shoulder heads and reverse the sides. So I'm just opposite side here. My right arm is on top. My left arm is holding the uh, left hand is holding the right shoulder. Here we go. Three. Inhale, come up. Exhale, round down. Inhale, come up. Keeping your head buried in this little nest you've created. Exhale, round down. Last one. Inhale, come up. Exhale as you round down. Bury yourself here a little bit. Inhale, neutral. Elbows as high as shoulder blades, shoulder head, and then just open the arms, turn the palms up, and slowly retract your arms towards your sides. Very nice. So a little shoulder work today. We know that from zero degrees to 90 degrees, that between 80 and 30 degrees is risky for our shoulder head. So coming out here to 90 degrees isn't too bad. I have a lot of deltoid work going on here, a lot of lat work in the back. But as I begin to bring my arm to about the 80 degree mark to 70, 60, 50, 40, 30. So here is a, a risky area for uh, circle sweeping the arms open. And since I'm working with some beginners and some seniors, I want you to know that you have a choice for your shoulder head to bring your arm a little closer in, keep the shoulder head close to home, and lifting straight up, I can go right to the zero degrees, exhale as I come down, taking my hand out to 90 degrees. So I have skipped over this particular arc here, which if you're taking care of shoulder, tendon, and ligament, or you're taking care of a rotocuff issue, or just frozen shoulder, staying to the 90 is great, drawing it in and taking it straight out. Let's try the other side. I'm gonna take out 90 degree, come close to the body, straight up to the zero degree. Exhale as I'm returning, out again, 90 degrees, back in again, close to the body, close to home, using my core, extending my rib cage to lift up. Exhale, hands. So it's fine to go ahead, if it's appropriate for you and available, to bring the arms up in a circle sweep. But if that's too much, I always want to give people the option of closer and up. We're going to go ahead and lean off to the right just a little bit and then take it to the left. Lean to the right. Palm can be up or down or maybe you're rotating the palm and back. Good stretch. This is excellent core work. Believe it or not, anytime we're lateral on the side of the body, we tend to do some nice core work here. Back to neutral. 
thumbs down, thumbs up, whatever works for you. Nice rotation here. Drawing the elbows into the rib cage, and then placing the hands into the lap. Very nice. We're gonna go ahead and come to all fours. Stretch out these legs a little bit. And today we're gonna take a nice lateral flexion of the spine but with a nice extension of the legs as well. So we're going to inhale and just uh, straighten out that right leg. I'm keeping my toes on the mat and exhale as I'm pressing toward the heel, lifting that knee and pressing the seam of the back of the leg up toward the sky. Inhale as I come forward here, nice rounding or bird-like of the foot. Exhale as I'm lengthening and stretching out the back of the leg and the arc. Inhale, come forward. Exhale, roll through those toes, kind of wake up those toes a little bit. It's important to have our hand seal and our foot seal when we're practicing. Now we'll go ahead and lift up that right leg. I'm gonna cross it over to the left and secure my feet and the ball of my foot, especially my right foot, on that left side. Big inhale here. And as I exhale, I'm taking my gaze around and looking at the heel. Inhale, come back. Exhale, looking around, finding that heel. Wonderful lateral stretch on my right side and a contraction on the left. Last one, big inhale, exhale, take it around, looking, stretch, hold, concentrate on contracting that left side and opening up the right. Inhale to come back to center, that was our last one. I'm going to go ahead and pick up that right leg, come forward on all of uh, Forearms, both forearms, a nice lift and stretch here. Relax in the head. Inhale, as I place down my right leg, come back up to all fours and we'll do the same on the other side. So there's three on one side and three on the other. Inhale, there goes that left leg floating up. Exhale, press it open. Inhale, come forward. Working through the feet now. Exhale, press back. Inhale, pressing up through the toes, coming onto the tops of the feet. Exhale, roll through, press back. Last one. Inhale, come forward here. Exhale, roll through. Inhale as I pick up that left leg. Exhale as I take it off to the right side of the mat. Big inhale here. Exhale, keeping my gaze up and looking back to that left heel. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale. Keeping the face and the gaze up. Your face and skull will follow your eyes. If your eyes lift, your skull will lift. If your eyes look down, your skull or head will follow, of course. And one more time, inhaling. Exhale as we come through this nice stretch. Squeeze the right side, contracting. Open the left side. Inhale, coming back to center. Exhale as I lower the forearms down. That's the gold post that we worked on in the uh, second session. Lowering the neck just to get a nice release here. On your next exhale, we'll draw that left leg back to the knees. Big inhale here. 
Exhale, press back to child's pose and rest those hips. Perfect opportunity here. We were up in a flexion of the wrist. Whether we were directly under the shoulder or out a few inches is fine. But holding up there for that wonderful lateral stretch. When you've come back to the child's pose, it's always good to go ahead and take your fingertips back to the toes. Point your fingers toward the sky and get a nice opposite action out of the wrists and relieve any issues you may have. Number one injury in yoga in the West is wrists. We don't use them as, uh, often. We don't lift weights, uh, hay bales and water buckets, and we tend to uh, not have enough power in our wrists, so we work on it slowly. Inhale is a Stretch my arms over and extend toward the front of the mat. Next inhale, I come forward, curl my toes, float those knees. Exhale, find your down dog. Walk through it a little bit, maybe one foot, then the other foot. Today we're going to be doing some leg extensions. So here, we're gonna inhale, come up onto the heel from our down dog. And lately we've been just coming as high as the hip. So for today, we're going to do three on each side. As you inhale, I want you to scrape away with the ball of the foot, float that leg. And taking your right leg as high as possible, whatever works for you. Now maybe you're still at the hip and that's enough. Maybe you can go ahead and begin to explore a little bit higher. Exhale, lower down. So again, any of those ranges are good for you. Inhale, let's take that leg up. Maybe you've come high as hip. Maybe you want to begin to extend it a little higher. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, last one will come up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, looking forward, floating just a little bit. Nice parenthesis with the arms. Floating the knees down. Flipping those feet, coming back to child's pose. And again, if that was a lot of... Um, extra work on the wrist, certainly bring the hands behind you, fingertips toward the sky, and work the opposite action on those wrists. Inhale, nice and long again, extension here, coming forward. Exhale as you curl the toes, float the knees, bringing yourself to down dog. Whether the heels come down or they stay up, I'd like you to find whatever works perfect here for you. Inhale, the heels come up. Foot floats up. Stopping at the hip or extending it a little higher. Exhale, lower. Inhale, raise. Exhale, lower. Last one. Inhale, raise. Exhale, lower. Looking forward, floating the knees down, flipping the feet, and now today we're going to also practice a lunge to a one-legged lift.
As we come from all fours and curl the toes, we're gonna go ahead and extend out the hips. We found plank posture. On your next exhale, we'll go ahead and lift up the hips, press back, inhale, there goes that floating leg, as far up as necessary for you, what do you feel like today? And then as I'm coming through, remember we worked on the side, taking the uh, calf and placing the foot, or if you wish, coming from this nice extension, looking ahead, leaning into the hand as you uh, bring that leg through so that the foot is in line with the hand, or maybe sometimes it's coming up behind the hand, that's fine. Then, as I push up, I'm going to balance on that left leg. Exhale, swing my left leg in next to my right. Find forward fold. Inhale, circle sweep, or come close to the shoulders. All the way into Udita extension. Hands come to heart. Exhale here. And we'll try the other side. Inhale, we'll come up. Exhale to the forward fold. Inhale as I step back to down dog. Exhale as I prepare. Inhale, there goes the heels. Left foot floats up. And again, leaning into the thumbs a little bit taking your foot to the side, going back and getting your leg and bringing it forward. Or, inhale, nice extension. Exhale, look forward, same cat-like leg. Placing the left foot toward the front of the mat. Hands are framing the foot. Inhale as I push off, floating that right leg now. And then on an exhale, letting it swing in. Same exhale takes me into a forward fold. Inhale. Rise up. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, step back. Find plank. Exhale, lower the knees. Press back to child's pose. Inhale, walking the hands back to the knees. Pressing up, shifting your hip either left or right. If you always go to the left of the heel, maybe this time you want to try the right side. Kind of keep it balanced, keep things even. Coming toward the end of the mat. And as we do a little bit of floor work today, I'm going to Go ahead and use a strap for a nice stretch of the adductor muscles. Coming down. Taking a bathrobe belt, a tie. These are one of my daughter's Taekwondo belts. Regular yoga strap. They all work great. We're going to go ahead and latch on to the right foot. You want to make sure that your strap is at the ball of the foot, not the toes. Gripping for dear life, that's a lot for the toes. Not in the arc of the foot. Very tender. Four, five tendons and a sixth tendon going uh, laterally across the bottom of the foot. So we want to be very careful not to press into the 
uh, tendons at the base of the foot. You could do the heel, but you might slip there at the heel and have it come off. So sometimes the bast is right here at the ball of the foot. You can put the yoga toe into that. That's a pointed foot. That's a flexed foot. And this is a combination of the two. So I'm pointing my leg, but I'm also flexing at the ball. Okay, choices are yours. Now, as you see, I'm reaching up here at the strap, but my shoulder is lifting off the ground. So I have this rounded shoulder and I'd like to be able to keep my shoulder from the rib cage. Keeping the wrist as straight as possible, we tend to hold the wrist at this angle or that angle. So just pay mind to that length of the strap it is a continuation of your wrist. So there's the setup for any use of strap, making sure that you're relaxed. A big inhale here as I press in with my left grounded leg and the flexion of my left foot, I exhale open and allow that right leg to come open. I may take my left hand to the opposite side. And it's a wonderful stretch here for the inner groins, the thighs. However, what's doing the work is the opposite side. So it looks like the right side is doing work. There's your mobility and your flexibility, but here is my stability. And it's this side of the body that's rolling toward the left or toward the fan that's really coming into play here. I could pick up my head if I wish, turn to the side, and get a wonderful supported neck stretch or certainly lifting up the skull, replacing it back down, having a nice neutral neck and line and spine. On your next inhale, we'll bring up that leg. Exhale, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the leg straight down to meet the other leg on the mat. Just kind of shake it out a little bit, roll it, give it a little bit of love. Bending my foot in, I'm gonna take that strap away. Securing the right leg, and now the other side. Ball of the foot. If I feel my shoulder has gone too high, I wanna lower it down just a little bit placing my right arm off to the right side. Big inhale here. Exhale as I lower the left leg any amount open for a nice stretch. This is called Para Angustasana. Para is foot. Angra is big toe or thumb. So it is a side opening here, keeping nice grounded on the right side, loose and flexible mobility on that left side. This is for people that wish to have a strap. Again, if it's too much to stretch, please bend that knee here to here. That's a great posture. People that have flexibility, this is where big toe hold comes in. Pada Angushasana is big toe hold out to the side, but today we were going to use our strap, showing you how to make sure that these props are used safely and comfortably, but what a wonderful uh, support system to have any kind of props with you. Keeping that right side down as you're breathing. Again, this could be three breaths, five good full breaths. Maybe a minute. So the energy action is coming at a diagonal here between my upper right leg and the inside of my left hip. Here's this energy. It's stretching point from here to here, open like a rubber band. So it's not just the stretching of the back of the legs. There's the stretching that comes along the front body at a diagonal. 
These are the opposing forces that happen in the body that are so magical and so wonderful. Para Angustasana, Big Toe Hold. Bring your head to neutral first. I always keep, take care of your cervical spine. And then on your next inhale, squeeze this extended right leg and let the left leg float up. Removing the strap. Exhaling all the way down. Let both feet come together. So an opposite action here for the open big toe hold would be now to wrap the legs together and get them to come together in a crossing. So in the uh, Sanskrit terms, this is Garuda, the eagle pose. We're just going to do it on the legs today. We'll have more in our sessions ahead, but we'll go ahead and bring up the legs. Nice flexion here in the hips. It feels very good. We'll go ahead and cross that right over left. And if you're able to cross below at the calf, that's great for a nice squeeze here, flexing, pressing my flesh together and squeezing. If it's too much to take that right leg under the left, then just sitting uh, parallel, like a lady sitting in a chair. So if you have it to wrap, great, and if you don't, it's great too. Here I might decide to roll a little bit, just to loosen my hips a little bit more. So this is eagle posture. Actually, it's supine laying down eagle posture, just having this nice floating here. It's really good to compress the legs together and have all the blood come to the center, squeezing, churning, and then opening. It's like a kink in the hose at first, and then you release that kink, and you've got all this wonderful blood flow. We'll take the other side. Left cross is over right. If you have it to go ahead and wrap all the way around, that's great. If you don't, again, just having a nice parallel leg. Don't have to do the wrapping. Rolling to the side just a little bit. Squeezing as you turn that twist. This is a great counter posture to big toe hold. And once you take one last squeeze, everything you have, bringing all the blood to the center, press, 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 and then release it. It's great for circulation. And our last little piece today, we're going to go ahead and put a little core into our practice. We're going to have one session, nothing but core work. So I thought I would begin to introduce one of the core pieces, which is just to lower that right leg. And then inhale, bring it up. And again, if you have to have bent knees and you're coming down like this, that's perfectly fine. The idea is not to uh, touch the heel onto the mat. Just let it kind of float there a little bit. Then bring it up. There's your core. If it's fine for you to go ahead and extend the legs, and we're just doing a few of these, lifting and lowering. Exhale as you go down. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you lower. And here we tend to challenge the core, so we come up in this tight arc, back shoulder. There goes that neck in the arc. So we want to drop the chin and have the dot in the forehead and the dot in the chin. That line is parallel to the floor. So even watch as you're lowering your leg that we don't all tense up to hold that leg out. It would be better to draw it in and bend the knee. Inhale as you come up. And then just relax it and let it go a little bit. And we have one more side. So again, that could be a minute or two. That's a great simple core piece. Keeping 
the back body, the upper body, nice and quiet. Here come the legs up. Exhale as you lower. Let the foot float just a little bit. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as you lower. Again, bend the knees if you need to. Inhale as you come up. If you wanted to use the support of the arms, that's fine as well. I'm pressing down into the earth as I am releasing that left leg. But keeping a good neutral neck, nice safe neck, nice neutral face. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lower. Using the glute muscle a little bit here. Nice extension of the leg activates the glutes. My glutes are not activated here when my leg is at a 90 degree angle. But 180 degree line, that glute's very active. Inhale as you come up. And let's take both legs down at the same time. Good luck and God bless you. Exhale, come down. Any amount, slower, faster. I'm going to go ahead and bring my feet a little co closer to my glutes. Press my spine into the mat as I exhale. Lift my hip points, pubic bone, glutes come up. Wonderful bridge pose here. After big toe hold, Garuda the eagle twist, and even a little bit of core, intro core. This is such a fabulous way to end your practice. Setubandha Sarvangasana. Sarvangasana begins to be the uh, shoulder stand where the legs go in the air. This is just kind of halfway. You can certainly support your arms to the side or bring your arms underneath you, attracting the shoulder blades a little bit more. Believe it or not, this is a meditation posture. After a while, you don't feel your body and your mind is at peace. Your face is soft. As I release my hands, I might bring my shoulder blades a little uh, flatter to the mat, round them just a little bit to expose the thoracic spine, roll into a beautiful neutral spine, so nice for those lumbars to open rather than be contracted in an arc so much. As I place my upper body and it finds its great place to be, then isolating a movement, my leg goes out to the corner of the mat. The other leg floats out to the corner of the mat. Palms come up. Begin to connect with your breathing again. Relax your face. Just let go. Let go of everything. Let go of who you think you are. Just be nothing.